I'm pretty sure a lot of you right now who are sitting here have heard of, uh, about the ways us, uh, the, every one of us, the humans, affect the environment around us. Like uh, our climate ch the climate change, the Anthropocene climate change that uh, we have created, or the deforestation that we have made, but also the good uh, things that we have done. Like uh, develop much higher technologies and feed up, uh, feed up the giant population that we've created. These are all effects of the Anthropocene, and unfortunately to us, it's just going to get worse in the future. But, uh, however, I'm pretty sure a lot of you right now were, are, and were still thinking. But what is this Anthropocene? That sounds a bit like gibberish. Well, as we know, geologists like to divide time into different eras or epochs. Uh, you should have heard of some of them by, in uh, school or in movies like Jurassic Park. Well, the Anthropocene is, uh, is an unofficial geological era, proposed by many geologi geologists, but still un unapproved. Uh, it, uh, it's an, a time uh, of Earth's history in which uh, humanity has had a large impact on Earth's ecosystems. There have been many proposed start dates for this uh, e epoch. Uh, the most official one we've ever got was the July 16, 1945, that is the Trinity nuclear test, when we have first started using nuclear power. But many other were proposed, from the Industrial Revolution to the Neolithic Revolution, we have, when we have first developed agriculture. That's not to say that the Anthropocene has, is a bad thing, at least for us. Uh, it's quite an era of progress. Uh, in the Anthropocene, we have the rich technological development in, in complexity much higher than ever before in, in, the, in the time of the universe as far as, far as we are aware. Uh, 10,000 years from now, humans were hunters-gatherers and uh, mainly just uh, hunted for food or gathered uh, berries or uh, other, th thing, other eatable things uh, and were hardly distinguishable from animals uh, just the fact that they use more uh, efficient stone tools and right now remember what we have developed in the last few years we have discovered a fundamental particle of the universe, the Higgs boson. We have discovered the largest ever, ever black hole. Uh, and the smartphones that we use right now, they have more computing power than all of NASA had when they first sent people to the moon. And at the same time... <laughs> At the same time, we have managed to produce much, uh, much more stuff than before. Uh, our uh, levels of uh, development and uh, standards of living have skyrocketed as well. Uh, in, the, in the Middle Ages and the early Modern Ages, like for example in Mughal India or Louis XIV's France, about uh, 10 to 20 percent were aristocrats. They, uh, they were rich, they owned large farms, and uh, they had a lot of serfs. And uh, today, if, for example, if you uh, can take a, a hot shower once a week, and you earn about $20,000 a year, which most people in developed countries do, you're in the, you're in the 10 percent of, world, of world's riches. You're, uh, you're in the world of aristocracy. Uh, and at the same time, our capability to uh, connect with each other, our, uh, our, our logistics, and our infrastructure have, have also developed uh, greatly. Uh, in the 1800s, before the Industrial Revolution, the fastest way I could send uh, a message to someone uh, in another city uh, was to give, uh, give a man with a horse a letter and uh, say, Godspeed, good sir, and hope he doesn't get killed by, killed by bandits or robbed in the way. Uh, and right now, uh, all I need is just type, uh, type, in, uh, type in a message uh, in my phone or my computer and it takes less than, uh, less than a millisecond for it to reach the person. Uh, the person. Uh, and 
uh, at the same time, although we have created a large uh, population, a huge population, we have managed to feed, uh, uh, feed it off. We have created enough food. For example, uh, in the most modern countries, only 3% of the population, or somewhere around that, uh, works in agriculture. And we managed to create a surplus of food and energy. But that's not to say that uh, there are no problems, that it's all just happy and butterflies everywhere. Uh, there will have to face a lot of problems in this century. But we'll have to check what humanity has to offer right now. Uh, our current... Uh, uh, <laughs> Uh, our current population, all of us combined, is 7 million and 300 million or so, I checked last week. Uh, and it's growing with an annual growth rate of one, uh, around 1% 1 per year. That, uh, for this population, this large, it's a massive increase. Uh, every second that I'm speaking about this to you, uh, four and a half people are born and only two people die every second. Uh, Out of all of us, uh, about one and a half billion uh, are overweight and over only 800 million are undernourished. That kind of puts it into perspective. We hear about world hunger every day, but uh, to think that in this planet there are twice as many people who have too much food than those who have too little. And out of all of us, about 3 billion or 40% can have access to the internet. Uh, our global purchasing parity, that is everything that we create, everything that we produce, everything that we have, is worth around a little bit over 100 trillion. Uh, divided between each one of us is a, a little bit over 10,000. In fact, Lithuania is a bit above the average, but that's not, that doesn't say that uh, much for us. Uh, and it's all been rising through the last centuries. This shows the role of GDP per capita, and as we approach the Industrial Revolution, it starts skyrocketing up, showing the massive increase in production in that era. This is a very famous graph. It shows the increase in world population. Uh, if you can see, the first time we reached 1 billion was in 1800s, and it took us 250,000 years to reach that. And we reached 7 billion in 2011, and we're expected to reach 8 in 2025. Uh, our world carbon emissions, everything, uh, uh, our major effect on the environment has also increased dramatically, especially with the Industrial Revolution, the discovery of uh, fossil fuels like coal and oil. Uh, and speaking about uh, carbon, uh, coal, coal and oil, our energy consumption, our consumption and creation of energy has also dramatically increased. Uh, in the 1800s, the best way we could gather energy was through renewable energy in, like water and air, and wind, windmills and watermills, and also biofuels like wood. And, uh, and we have discovered more and more ways to gather energy, from coal to oil to nuclear energy. But unfortunately, we're going to have a, a few problems. Even though our industrial, industrial base is quite great and we managed to support uh, the entire population, that, that all 7 billion of us, right now even it has problems. Uh, our uh, technologies just aren't, uh, aren't fast enough to keep up with the giant uh, population increase. And at the same time, most of the population is in poor countries, and most of the production is in the rich ones. And uh, there's not that much trade between these two. All of this increases our chance of global, uh, mass global extinction um, dramatically, much more than in the last centuries. From global pandemics to uh, mass, uh, mass nuclear conflicts, uh, the chance is much higher than ever before. It also, it's also dramatically increased by the population, which we've talked about before. Uh, 
because pandemics spread from living person to living person and when there's too many of them it's far easier for them to spread and a much higher population means, means much higher ethnic and religious tensions and at the same time uh, uh, with all of this, uh, the things that live with us, the other plants and animals, they, if, if they are not useful to us, they don't have a good time in the Zipah. Uh, as I said, uh, I, I didn't say, I did say, uh, if all of us were suddenly disappear and aliens would appear, uh, would arrive here millions of years from now, they would see no trace of us, no existence, no trace of our existence, but they will see a mass extinction event happening today, rivaling the five that happened before it. Uh, and uh, however, uh, that's not to say that the population isn't going to uh, level, up, level down. Uh, most people, when they hear about the huge uh, population growth of our population, uh, they think that it's going to last uh, forever, that uh, the poor countries are still going to have uh, a much higher uh, population growth than normal. However, it's been shown that economical development can stop, uh, can stop the population growth and level, the level it down. Uh, in agricultural societies, most families have a lot of children. First, to combat the large infant mortality rate, and later because children at the age of 12 and, uh, and beyond can help at the farm. But now, it takes much, uh, it was, uh, uh, it makes much more to, uh, to nurture and, uh, and develop a human being or for over to up to 24 years or even higher uh, and the cost is much higher and at the same time our higher medicine reduced the infant mortality rate to basically nothing uh, but at the same time we have a ch higher chance of destroying ourselves than ever before uh, remember what kind of weapons technology we had in the 1800s or even before that. We had ineffective muskets which were useless in, uh, in wet climates and huge mortars which could uh, break through giant walls and, uh, and uh, sh holes of ships but they, their, their fire rate was very slow. And, the, the, uh, and one, the, through the industrial revolution we have developed various other kinds of technology in other areas from uh, but at the same time we developed weapons technologies as well from machine guns to nuclear bombs which can level down entire cities so what are the possible ways of how the Anthropocene is going to end thanks to my bad pro uh, formatting you only uh, already know the first option if we manage to develop a technology which can help us uh, fix most of the issues that we have right now, overpopulation and climate change, then uh, it's possible we're going to survive the Anthropocene with little to no injuries. Uh, not literally. Uh, but at the same time, there's other kinds of options. For example, if we fail to develop a new, uh, a, a new, uh, a new better technology, and we can't level down our uh, population, then it's likely we're going to simply go extinct, uh, either through pandemics or global mass conflicts, World War Three included. Uh, the third chance that uh, I'm not really a fan of is uh, we somehow managed to uh, creatively uh, go back into a lower state of complexity. We uh, abandoned the technological advancement that we have reached today uh, and go back to what we were before, thus uh, rendering most of the problems null. Uh, I myself, I'm a, fan, I'm a fan of the first option, myself. Uh, but we'll have to play our cards very right. Uh, Although we have assumed that it's going to be the first option uh, through science fiction novel, novels and such, uh, we'll have to both level down our population and control it uh, in a similar way to what it was in China uh, and, at the, uh, and uh, reduce our effect on the climate uh, and at the same time pre prevent it from destroying ourselves. But at the same time, let's not just look at this in a grim way. If we manage to survive the 21st century bottleneck, 
and to go on to live further beyond, and it's likely we'll achieve a new revolution in technology, much like what happened with the Industrial Revolution. We could uh, become a space-faring civilization, uh, travel across and colonize across the entire galaxy. And, uh, and although you might feel like the Anthropocene is going to hurt, you should remember that there is still is a light in the tunnel, and uh, that light in the tunnel, will, uh, if, we, uh, if time is on our side, will be lightened by technology. Yeah.